Welcome to my series on AP Physics 1. Today, we'll be covering Unit 2, which is Forces and Newton's Laws. We'll jump right in with the definition of a force. According to Newton's first law, a force is necessary to change the velocity of an object. For example, if an object is at rest, a force is required to make it move, and if an object is moving, a force is required to stop it. More formally, Newton's first law states that every object persists in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by the forces oppressed on it. Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Because acceleration is in F equals ma, force is a vector with a magnitude and a direction. Unless a force is caused by a gravitational or magnetic field, you must be pushing or pulling on an object to exert a force on it. For example, if I push my microphone, I was exerting a force on it, which caused it to accelerate because its velocity changed. Next, we'll move on to free body diagrams. Not only will you be asked to draw these for the AP physics test, but they're really useful for understanding dynamics problems. Simply put, a force diagram is a diagram showing all of the forces on a given object. Many free body diagrams have the same components. For example, the force of gravity. Because F equals MA, the force of gravity upon an object is equal to that object's mass times the gravitational acceleration on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. If your physics problem is taking place on Earth, you'll need a force due to gravity. However, because of Newton's third law, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, if an object isn't moving, there must be an equal force pushing in the opposite direction as the gravitational force. This is called the normal force. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface that an object is resting on, and if that surface is flat, its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force, except it's in the opposite direction. If your object is resting on a surface, you will need a normal force in your diagram. Next is the applied force on an object. This is the force if you're pushing or pulling on an object, which most physics problems will include. If a force is applied at an angle, you'll need to break this force down into its x component and its y component. If you don't know how to do this, watch my previous video on kinematics where I explain how to break down a vector. In any case, at whatever angle the force is being applied at, there'll be some amount of force in the x direction and some amount of force in the y direction. Finally, if an object is being pushed along a surface, there's always a friction force that goes the opposite direction as the applied force. We'll learn how to calculate that friction force later in the video. Now all of these forces are all well and good, but the purpose of a free body diagram is to find the total force on an object, also called the net force. To do this, you need to add up all of the vectors of the forces acting on the object. Again, if you don't know how to add multiple vectors in multiple directions, watch my previous video. Anyway, the net force, which is the sum of all the forces, is what's going to cause the object to accelerate. This is the force you should use to calculate acceleration using F equals MA. Though I mentioned it briefly, it's worth going over Newton's third law again. As I said, it means every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In terms of physics, this means that if I exert a force on an object, that object will exert an equal force back onto me, except in the other direction, of course. This explains why any object resting on a surface has normal force. There has to be some force that counteracts gravity. Let's talk about friction. The force of friction on an object can be calculated. It's equal to the product of the normal force times the coefficient friction, denoted nu. The coefficient friction is a property of surfaces in contact, and is calculated empirically, meaning by experiment. The higher the coefficient friction, the more friction there are between the surfaces. For example, the coefficient friction between rubber and metal is higher than the coefficient friction between wood and metal, because those two more easily slide against each other. If you remember that the normal force is the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, you'll understand that the friction force is a function of mass, not of speed meaning, no matter what speed you're going, the coefficient friction for any two objects will be the same. However, you might realize that there's a point where the force of friction is higher than the applied force. This leads us to the difference between the two types of friction, kinetic and static. Simply put, kinetic friction is friction during movement, and static friction is friction that resists movement. For example, if my phone is resting on the table and I push it very slightly, it's not going to move. I have to exert a greater force to move it. So, in reality, any two surfaces share two different coefficients of friction, the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction. The coefficient of static friction is always bigger, because once an object is moving, it takes less force to keep it moving than it does to start it at all. 
We've now covered all of the content of this unit, but there are still some specific problem types that are worth going over. First, problems on an inclined plane. As I mentioned, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface that the object is resting on. But what if that surface isn't parallel to the ground? In that case, the gravitational force vector of the object can be divided into two components, the component that's parallel with the normal force and the component that's perpendicular with the normal force. Because of the way the normal force is defined, the component that's parallel with the normal force will always equal its magnitude. However, the component that's perpendicular to the normal force is pushing the object down the plane. Because of this, if an object is sitting on an inclined plane, it will begin to accelerate, because this force acts like an applied force. If there's already an applied force, just add the two together. If you have a problem that contains a system of multiple objects, you should consider the force as applying to the whole system instead of one object. For example, if you have a pulley system, the gravitational force acting on each weight is actually acting on the whole system. This makes it easier to evaluate the problem. If a weight is hanging on a string, there won't be any normal force, but there will be a force of tension. This force of tension acts like a normal force because it counteracts gravity and keeps the weight in place. Finally, dynamics problems will often be combined with kinematics problems because acceleration is present both in F equals MA and the kinematic formulas. Because of this, if you're studying for this unit specifically, it's worth brushing up on the kinematic formulas because you'll likely need them to solve problems. In summary, force can be applied on an object by pushing it or by gravity or electricity. The equation for force is F equals MA, where M is mass and A is acceleration. Newton's laws govern how force works. The first law states that force is necessary to change the speed of an object, whether the speed is zero or something else. Newton's second law defines force as being proportional to mass and acceleration, or more simply, F equals MA. Finally, Newton's third law states that every force or action has an equal and opposite force or reaction. I hope that you enjoyed this video on AP Physics 1. If you did, please consider subscribing or mentioning my channel to your classmates. Because my channel is so small, it will really help. Also, if you didn't read the description, I do plan to make videos for the rest of the units in AP Physics 1.